The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisor's Weekly Update, brought to you by... Each week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to the Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Hey there, and welcome everyone to this week's apparently abbreviated edition of the Mayors and Supervisors Update. I am Chris Carosa, publisher of the Len Menden Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel. And each week we bring you the goings on from the mayors and the supervisors in the towns and villages we cover. This week, we're gonna start out with Eileen Hansen, who as you can see, is not here on the screen, but she did send in a report and this is it. The Scottsville Village Board meeting was held this past Tuesday, February 8th, Local Law 2-2022. The tax exemption for volunteer firefighters was passed by the board. The cannabis law was put on the March 15th ballot for a vote. It reads, shall the village of Scottsville allow retail sales of cannabis within its boundaries? Resolutions for the authorization of and for the project costs for the $30,000 award allocation, as well as a resolution for the seeker were approved. The next budget workshop will be held this Tuesday, March 15th at 6 p.m. in the Municipal Building. And she wishes everyone to have a great week. John Moffat, take it away. What's going on in the town of Menden? Hi, Chris. Uh, great to be here again. Just wanted to uh, make mention of a couple of things. First of all, um, effective uh, uh, the 10th of February, we have... Uh, changed our policy at town-owned buildings to uh, optional mask use. Certainly we uh, welcome anyone who wants to continue to wear a mask for personal reasons, certainly understand that, uh, but we know are no longer requiring them at this time. Hopefully we're headed in a good direction with this whole thing. Um, also wanted to mention that New York State budget uh, the positive part of that is that there seems to be some increased funding for some road projects, uh, Bridge New York, Pave New York, uh, CHIPS, which is the Consolidated Highway uh, funding that we receive from the state, is still in place. And so um, we, we feel that uh, also I think there's a pothole uh, Pothole New York or something like that that's, uh, that uh, the governor has put into place and remain to be seen which roads get their potholes filled by whom. But anyway, uh, anything's better than nothing. So uh, the downside of it is uh, home rule is being challenged by the state and uh, the governor's proposal for a state takeover of central component of local resident excuse me, local residential zoning. Specifically, it would require every municipality in the state to allow at least one accessory dwelling unit on every residential lot. This proposal in substantial measure would bring an end to single family residential zoning. Uh, it would take control from the town governments and would eliminate the crucial right of home rule. So speaking on behalf of the town of Menden, and I've spoken to many other town supervisors in Monroe County, we are opposed to that in the 2022-23 budget. Hopefully we'll see that uh, some action on that. The uh, Military Memorial and Splash Park uh, is going out to bid. There will be an advertisement in the Sentinel for bid it, bids, and that will be in the next issue on February 17th. So we're looking forward to getting some competitive bids on that project. There will be a public hearing on February 14th for the Town of Menden regarding the first responders assessment reduction, which I've spoken about uh, in the last couple of weeks. And that reduction amounts to about $4,000 that uh, the town will continue to collect that $4,000, but it will be from 
people who are not first responders, volunteer first responders, I should say. So I encourage everyone to consider that, that cost of that $4,000 would be spread out amongst all our other residents. We certainly appreciate all the hard work and volunteer time that all of our responders have put in, but we also wanna make sure that everyone understands the ramifications of anything that shifts the tax burden. Uh, let's see, uh, speaking of taxes, county and town tax payments at town hall. Uh, the last day for interest-free was February 10th. So from here on out, uh, payments will continue to be made here at the Menden Town Hall for all Menden residents. Uh, even if you're in the payment status where you're paying uh, uh, multiple payments, you can still make those payments here or put them in the mail or put them in the drop box on the Main Street side of the Menden Town Hall. There is a one and a half percent uh, finance charge for the month of February, and then uh, it it expands as the months go by, one and a half percent in March and April and et cetera. So um, uh, if you have any questions, I would encourage you to contact our relatively new town clerk, Michelle Booth, uh, and she can fill you in on any details regarding county and town tax payments. Her number is 624-6060. Thanks for having me, Chris. All right. Thanks, John. And then finally, we have a report in from Rick Milne, who is in a meeting right now, so he can't come. And by the way, so is Mike Falk, but uh, Mike said that he'll send something in, so we'll print it in next week's edition of the Sentinel, so you'll be able to read what's going on in Lima. Anyway, so this is what's going on in the village of Honeyoy Falls. Snow cleanup on our village sidewalks has continued this past week. Heavy snowpack and ice has made it difficult. Uh, walking is very challenging in this, some areas. Please walk carefully, and as the safety experts teach, walk like a penguin. There are still many slippery, icy spots. The Wolfsburger Park development has started. It's important to note that the initial clearing of property always is a bit alarming. I've received multiple emails and calls about this. The developer and property owner are following an approved, reviewed plan. Elite Nails is a new business opening in the next couple of weeks on the West Main Street Business Corridor. We appreciate their investment in our community, and I've seen quite a bit of buzz about this on social media. The OK Beer Company project is also coming along well, and we continue to look forward to this great addition to the bowling alley. Lastly, we do have another established business in the village, Microopen Technologies, that is coming before the Zoning Board of Appeals with a nice building upgrade and facility addition. Some exciting business news for sure. The village will be moving back to open meetings. We'll continue to suggest that MAST will be preferred in our municipal building, but not mandatory. That's it from Rick Mill, Mayor of Honeyway Falls. John, do you have anything else to add or are we all set? We're all set. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for watching. And remember, we're here every Sunday at 1 p.m. on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. And if you miss those things, or you could always see the replay, or if you prefer, you can read about it in the paper where we have a transcript of everything, including what's not on this show. Bye-bye for now. Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com.